What's going on YouTube? In this video, we're going to be talking about combat resupply. Now, through my own experiences in 2003 in the initial invasion of Iraq, you know, my second deployment in 2004, uh, Najaf, Iraq, with 1st Battalion, 4th Marines, there were several operations that we were engaged uh, for extended periods of time with the enemy. Now, obviously, during those engagements, we got resupplied in the field while we were still actively engaging the enemy. So the idea of this video is to show um, how you get resupplied as far as ammo is concerned and how you can quickly utilize it uh, to get it back in your, your magazine so that you can get it in your weapon and back in the fight. Um, so this idea kind of came to me the other, the other day. We were uh, running a live fire uh, range. There was a squad of Marines that just got issued their ammo, and I'm watching them pull out bandoliers and whatnot. And they're literally pulling stripper clips out and, you know, separating the rounds off the stripper clips and then loading them individually into their magazines. And, um, you know, I'm talking, these Marines are supposed to top off their magazines. So why they were not utilizing their speed loaders and stripper clips, you know, was blowing my mind. So when I went over there and asked them, you know, like, why aren't you guys using, using your freaking stripper clips and uh, your speed loaders? You know, they kind of looked at me with that freaking Lance Corporal PFC blink stare. Um, so... And, and then there was a couple that were trying to utilize their speed loaders and they were freaking, the way they were pushing the rounds on the stripper clip, you know, wasn't loading. And, you know, they probably got frustrated and, and threw it off. So, anyways, the only thing I think of is maybe they weren't taught it. Uh, now, I know to a veteran Marine or a veteran soldier, this sounds like something that, you know, so minuscule and basic that you know, how don't they not know it? But you got to think about it. You know, guys that are going through recruit training and school of infantry and whatnot, you know, they're on a... A fixed schedule where you know they're trying to get those guys in and out as fast as possible get them you know basically trained and get them out the door so they can get to their units uh, so they're getting you know cookie cutter training and it's mass training at that it's not individual training um, so a lot of these things NCOs are expected to teach and what I'm thinking is that these guys were never taught that and it might be just because of the simple fact that a lot of combat veterans are getting out and uh, might have taken those skills not necessarily skills but you know, that basic stuff um, gets overlooked and is not getting taught to the junior guys. So in any event, I'm going to go through and we'll talk about some of the stuff. And, uh, you know, if it's something you already know, great, good on you. Awesome. All right. If it's not, you know, hey, more something to put in your, your uh, brain housing group so that you can use that at a later time. This pretty much only applies to my uh, war fighters out there. But, hey, you know, some of the stuff you can buy as a civilian and if this is the way you want to store your ammo, you know, good on you. Um, in any event, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, 556. Now, when you're in, you know, when you're in combat operations and whatnot, you could get resupplied a number of different ways. Um, they could just come up and give you a crate of 556 and you take it from there, or uh, they come up with a bunch of, you know, 50 cal ammo cans filled with, you know, uh, 556 bandoliers because that's how they come packaged. Or you could have a PFC Lance Corporal or somebody come running up with a bunch of bandoliers strung over his shoulders and they can start passing it out that way. It's already broken out for you. Um, either way, we're going to tuck it from the top and that way, you know, if it comes, you know, like this, you know what to do. Okay, so anyways, 556 five, comes in a crate just like this, okay. Uh, tells you exactly what it is on the crate. Tells you uh, how many rounds are in there, so 1,680 uh, cartridges. Tells you what kind of caliber it is, 5.56 ammunition. Um, even tells you the, the what the type of ammunition is, so M8, M855 ammunition. So uh, inside this crate is going to be two 50 caliber ammo cans. Um, they have 840 rounds in each can, uh, so that's seven bandoliers with 120 rounds in each bandolier. Okay, on 10 round stripper clips. All right. So how to open this? These crates have. Uh, these metal uh, hook and loops here, okay, and they'll usually be pressed down pretty hard because they've been packaged and whatnot. Um, they also have a little metal wire retaining band around around one of them, okay. You can easily break that with your, you know, your hands if you use a little man, but it can be a pain in the butt. So, you know, if you got a Gerber or Letterman or whatnot, you know, it'll, it'll make it a lot easier to open these up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. So all you gotta do is pull these. Uh, hook and loops back like this, all right, and the uh, crate's going to open up. Now, obviously, I've repacked this crate, so <laughs> um, it's going to have two OD green ammo cans in here, uh, 
Um, obviously, these are your own personal cans I put in here, so it's completely different. But in any event, you'll have two 50 caliber ammo cans. Um, you know, they'll have like a, a piece of styrofoam in between just for more added protection. Okay, so once you got your ammo box out of the crate, you can open it up and you're going to have your individual bandoliers in there. So each bandolier is going to have four pockets in it and each pocket is going to contain a cardboard box that has three uh, strip of clips on it with ten rounds each on each strip of clip. Okay, so you pull the cardboard box out, you got your three strip of clips. Additionally on your bandolier you're going to have this black uh, safety pin. 101 things you can do with a safety pin. I'm not going to go over all the stuff you can use, utilize a dang safety pin for, but the primary purpose of this is to um, pin up this bandolier strap. Okay, so if you're actually going to wear this bandolier, and we'll talk about that here in a second, if you're actually going to wear this bandolier and you obviously just throw this over your body, there's going to be a lot of excess strap and this is going to be banging against your uh, the side of your body or whatnot against your gear. It's going to make a lot of noise. Okay, so if you utilize this black safety pin, you can pin up the excess strap so that it's tighter against your body and won't make as much noise when you're moving. So that's the primary purpose for that safety pin. I know a lot of people don't know that. Um, so inside each bandolier is going to be one speed loader that's going to look just like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about loading up your magazine. So remember, all this is designed to do this quickly so that you can get yourself back in the fight as fast as possible. All right, so your speed, uh, speed loader is going to go over the back of your uh, magazine just like this. Should be pretty secure, pretty snug. Uh, shouldn't be much slack in it, if any. All right, um, your grip is going to be important. So I always hold the uh, magazine just like this so that my, uh, my top index finger is over the base of the speed loader. I'm then going to take my 10 round stripper clip and I'm going to insert it into the speed loader just like this. So it should look exactly like this. Okay. Now here's where the technique is important. Um, I was watching you know, some of these junior marines try to do this stuff and they were like, I, I can't even mimic the, the stupidness that I was observing. It was ridiculous. Um, but they weren't able to get their, their rounds in there. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, they didn't have the leverage on the rounds, so they weren't loading properly. Um, so anyways, long story short, take your thumb, come over the top, just like this, and then you're going to push down. All right. And then you'll discard the uh, stripper clip. You're going to take the next hand. And there we go, 30 rounds. Okay, now when it starts to give you, when it starts to get hung up a little bit and you can't push it all the way in with one push, then you just do a little, you know, down, up, down, up, down, up motion um, and just kind of rock them in um, and they'll, they'll all go in. So there's 30 rounds in here, you know, that got, got in this magazine in a matter of seconds. Okay, so this is a fully loaded magazine ready to go. Now, the other thing about these bandoliers, um, let's say you're, in a tight situation or you're about to go on another operation where it requires you to have more magazines um, just you need you need more ammunition for the fight you got more magazines you can take um, but you, let's say you don't have additional magazine pouches these bandoliers how they come right now um, will not facilitate carrying a full-size m16 or m4 magazine however they have this little it's a little white um, sew job across the side here to hold the uh, stripper's clip box, okay? But this easily comes right out. You just pull that out, okay? And now, now that that's gone, you can take these full-size 30-round magazines and they fit right in there like that okay so now let's say you got four fully loaded magazines
there you go. You now got a bandolier with four fully loaded M16 mags that you can throw on your body. You didn't need to add any additional mag pouches or anything to your gear, okay? And like I said, as long as you safety pin it up so that it's nice and tight, the sucker won't flop around that much on your gear and it won't make as much that much noise, okay? But that's how it's done. Just plussed up your uh, ammunition capacity. Simple and easy. That's how they uh, manufacture stuff. That's how they send it to us. They set us up for success, you know, so that we can get into the fight as quick as possible, carrying on to the enemy. All right. All right. Let's talk about machine gun ammo. Um, in each ammo can will be 200 rounds. In that 200 round ammo can, you'll have two 100 round bandoliers. So it's going to look something like this. Okay. So you open it up. You've got the, uh, the two 100 round individual bandoliers. Okay, so go ahead and pull them out. And each individual box will look something like this. Okay, so it's got the tab, and then you open it up, and then you got your uh, your 7.62 rounds inside. Now, as far as as far as carrying ammunition, um, one thing I just want to show real quick. These pouches that are designed to carry uh, numerous M16 rounds or some saw, some saw rounds or whatnot, they will actually fit the 762 box inside them. There you go. Easy day, right? So um, that's a good way, if, if you're a machine gunner, if you got pouches like this, this particular pouch is made by Spec Ops, but uh, you know, these, these little saw pouches and uh, you know, other pouches that are this size, um, IFAC pouches are another pouch that uh, you know similar dimensions. They can hold these uh, machine gun 762 ammo boxes, you know, 100 round capacity, um, nice and easy. So easy access to get to them real quick, um, not much effort, and a good way to carry machine gun ammo. Okay, so what we used to do with these machine gun, uh, these machine gun bandoliers, is we prep this stuff so that it was ready to, uh, you know, throw onto the gun. Okay, so we would take out a knife and we would cut the straps off one of the bandoliers. All right, I'm just gonna put this aside for now. Now, we take the tops of these boxes and rip them off. All right now, I would leave these uh, these bandolier pouches on the box. The reason for that is because it helps, you know, create a cushion and helps take up space to, uh, so that there's less noise. I generated off these uh, these uh, boxes being in here with, with rounds, built-in ammunition in there. All right, and then you put them back inside. All right. Now this isn't these aren't M240 links. Um, these are actually for my uh, M1919. Um, this chamber to 308. But anyways, long story short, it's very similar. Okay, to M240 links. So. Um, utilizing for this purpose to show you guys. Okay, so anyways, you're going to situate your ammo so that once you open up this, once you open up this ammo can, all right, you're able to start pulling the rounds out to place on the feed tray, and it's just to be a continuous feed. Okay, once you have it back in the box, you're going to link both belts together in the center. Okay, so that your rounds are able to feed out, uh, and it's going to be a continuous, uh, continuous belt. All right. Um, and what we're going to do with this strap is we're going to take the ends and we're going to tie a knot on each end. Alright, 
So once we have the strap just like this, we've got a knot on each end, we're going to place that inside the ammo can, just like this. And then we're going to close the ammo can. Alright, so now we have an ammo can, a 7.62 ammo can, that has a strap. Okay, so it's easy to be transported. And, you know, once we get there, we get to the fight, take it off, throw it down, open up your can, pull this strap out, you don't need it no more, and then you can start feeding your rounds right into the uh, feed tray of the uh, M240. Well, that's it. That's it for uh, machine gunners. Okay, last two things I want to talk about, um, saws. Uh, Marine Corps kind of doesn't use saws as much as they used to. Uh, we kind of replaced it with the uh, M27 IAR, Infantry Automatic Rifle. So I haven't seen a you know a saw ammo in a while, but from what I remember, it, it comes in a big fat ammo can. Um, and it comes in a, uh, a pouch just like this, okay? And I think, I believe that there's four of these individual drums in the, the big fat uh, ammo can. Um, so these things are pretty self-explanatory. You've got a, uh, you know, a saw drum inside the pouch, and the pouch has a, uh, a strap that you can throw around your body. It also has a, uh, you know, a retaining tie here that you can utilize. But uh, you know, pretty self-explanatory. This and the uh, 40 millimeter M203 rounds, they come in a bandolier that looks just like this. But they have six individual slots for uh, 40 millimeter grenades. And those are self-explanatory. You just grab them, you know, you can utilize a strap, throw them on your body. If you don't have pouches for them, you just utilize the bandolier. Uh, all this stuff is just already packaged so that it's it's ready for combat. It's ready for use. Uh, quick and easy, get get yourself back into fight. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. Again, some guys might watch this and say, oh, that's basic information, basic knowledge. But I'm telling you, you know, I'm watching these junior Marines um, right out of training and whatnot. And, you know, they... <laughs> They, no one showed them the stuff. They're just kind of, you know, used to being handed, you know, uh, four stripper clips and saying, hey, load a magazine of 10 rounds, load a magazine of 20 rounds. Um, so, you know, no one ever taught them how to properly utilize the uh, speed loaders and uh, machine gunners. You know, I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, some of the, the basic techniques that are utilized to prep machine gun ammo and everything else might be going, you know, might have been lost in the... Uh, you know, down down the line with some of the veterans or whatnot. So, anyways, long story short, here's just a few things to put in your metal toolbox. Hope you utilize them to the fullest. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate the support. And uh, if you got any suggestions for uh, future videos, let me know. Thanks for watching.